Hi, this is Jack, editor for Gaming Trend here, talking about Double Dragon Gaiden Rise of the Dragon. I'll have a full review up in the coming weeks, but until then I just wanted to give some basic impressions. I had about 90 minutes to essentially get a feel for things, and so I'll be talking a little bit about the general mechanics as well as the structure of the game. Now you didn't hear this from me, but Double Dragon games are typically arcade-style beat-em-up games. You go left, right, up, down, all around while maiming guys however you see fit. Double Dragon Gaiden is no exception. Now the game is called Double Dragon Gaiden, like it's a spin-off or something, but I wouldn't worry too much about that. Story isn't really what you're here for. More importantly, relative to other Double Dragon games, this is a fully featured experience. There's a lot of characters, stages, enemies, all that stuff. So you're not getting shortchanged here, you don't need a degree in Double Dragon, it stands on its own just fine. I'm glad I got to spend some time with the game, because my feelings on it after 5 minutes are pretty different compared to after the first 90. My first impression was that it was so slow. The characters move on the slower side in general, but more noticeable than that is just the weight and recovery to all of your attacks. There are a bunch of playable characters with different speeds, but the heft of their attacks remains consistent. When combined with the slow movement, this often unintentionally puts you into situations where you're just going to get hit in the face because it'll take your character a second or two to recover. To be clear, this isn't necessarily a bad thing. All beat em up games have this to some degree, that's part of what makes them interesting. Beat em up games often get a bad rap for being simple, but there is a strategy to them that makes them engaging. Spacing your attacks and defeating enemies without leaving yourself vulnerable tends to be the primary thing you're thinking about, beyond how cool it is just to press a button to beat someone up. In Double Dragon though, it's very noticeable, resulting in a bit of a learning curve. While the game feels slow, it has two main things to inject some life into it. One, there's a tag team system. Even in co-op, each player selects two characters, and then you can press a button to swap between them if your special meter is full. This gives you some different movesets to play around with to keep things interesting, but it also acts as a get out of jail card. If you mess up or leave yourself in a bad spot, with a tap of a button you can summon your tag partner to intercept enemies or break combos. It lessens the frustration a bit while also making the game more dynamic in how you approach situations. There's a bit of a risk to it too, because if you don't take at a good time, you can end up with both characters getting beaten down. The other jolt comes from how the game rewards you for doing well. In terms of what doing well looks like, that generally means grouping enemies together to wait them all out with a super attack. When you do that, food flashes on screen and then drops on the ground for you. It's kind of like the game leaving you a tip for doing cool stuff. Not only is chaining special KOs a cool thing to do though, it's also how you keep yourself healthy. Or if you're really good, how you get extra points. At first I was getting these constantly, to the point where I worried it was getting a little too intrusive, but it becomes more challenging to chain enemies together as you progress, so it's a good balance overall. So basically the game has a bit of a learning curve to it, both in how you play it well and also just how much you like it. But once you adjust, it's pretty fun. The defining characteristic of Double Dragon Gaiden is that it's built for replays. When you begin a playthrough, you get to select what level to start with. The idea being that the stages grow longer and more difficult as you progress. For example, the first level you pick only has one section to it, but then the second will have two, with different mini-bosses and tougher enemies it wouldn't have had if you'd picked the second stage first. So each playthrough, you have to decide well, what level do I want to deal with at its worst, and which one do I want to deal with at its best? Between the levels, you can trade your money points in for a randomized selection of upgrades. A big chunk of them seem to buff stats, whether that's of your moves or attributes like health or defense. Some seem good, some don't. I suppose it's all the luck of the draw. It's another thing that you can use to customize your playthrough. Before you even start the game, you can tune other elements of it to make it more or less difficult. I suspect that the end result for any true Double Dragoner that's my technical term for them, will be cranking up the difficulty sliders and foregoing the upgrades altogether. But until you're at that level, it's a neat way to ease you into the game. While the core of the game remains the same no matter who you pick, the characters do have some pretty noticeable differences to change things up too. The Double Dragon Brothers, Billy, Jimmy, or Bimmy, Jimmy, whoever these guys are, they offer a pretty typical Double Dragon feel. But characters like Marion focus on ranged gun attacks. It feels a little weird doing uh, gun combos, but her style makes you consider your approach to enemies differently. She's typically stuck in one place while attacking, but Bimmy and Jimmy have moves that let you fly across the screen or control crowds pretty easily. Everything in Double Dragon Gaiden feeds into itself. The better you score, the more points you trade for tokens that give you free revives or unlock things in an in-game store. The higher you set a difficulty, the more tokens you have the opportunity to get. The more unlocks you want, the more you need to replay the game. The more you play the game, the more opportunities you have to try your new stuff out. It's a sound system. Where or not it holds up, I'll leave for the full review. That's all for my little guide in about Double Dragon Gaiden for now, but rest assured I'll be back with the main story soon.